Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, architect at Winelect. Today we're going to be looking at NFS with Azure Kubernetes Services and how you can use this with blob storage, file storage, and Azure NetApp files. Hi guys, today we're looking at Kubernetes on Azure again, and this time we're going to be looking at it in relationship to the NFS protocol. We've been doing a flurry of activity around the NFS protocol here lately because Azure has really ramped up the NFS offerings on Azure, and currently there are three first-party offerings on Azure. One is the Azure Blob Storage story for using NFS version three, where you can use Azure blob storage mounted into a virtual machine using version three of the NFS protocol. And that will work with Kubernetes. You can also use Azure files in a preview feature they have out right now that uses version 4.1 of NFS. And that will allow you to mount an NFS share into a Kubernetes or into a Linux VM. And then you also have Azure NetApp files, which gives you the ability to choose between version three or version four of the protocol. And you can also share that right alongside of a, an SMB share as well. So there's a lot of options for doing this and they all work with Kubernetes. And that's a great way to have uh, Kubernetes on Azure because you can have essentially three different tiers of service using the same protocol that is baked into Kubernetes without any need for uh, third party plugins or anything like that. So with blob storage, you're obviously going to have a lower end service. It still works well and it's useful for for some kinds of applications that don't need high IOPS or high throughput, then you might have a middle tier with NFS on file storage. And then if you needed that enterprise class storage solution where you needed fast IO with uh, low latency connections and lots of IOPS, then of course, Azure NetApp files is gonna be the choice there. But in any case, we're gonna look at how to use all three of these with the, uh, the Azure Kubernetes services. And we're just gonna simply spin up some pods on Kubernetes cluster and then attach them to the storage there. And then we're going to look at how these files work. And then we're going to look at the actual kinds of things that you can do with the manifest files and the, the kind of idiosyncrasies between each of these to get them to work. But all in all, they pretty much do the same thing with just different performance characteristics. So let's dive right in and look at blob storage first. I'm here in a folder and I have five Kubernetes manifest files and each one of these plays a different part in creating a persistent volume on Azure. And all of these are gonna look similar, but there's gonna be some idiosyncrasies about each of these that I wanna point out. Now, a persistent volume is the basic unit for creating persistent storage on Azure. Now, if I was using something other than NFS, I would need something called a storage class, but given that NFS is kind of built into Kubernetes. I don't have to define a storage class for these. I simply just have to use the default networkable storage class. And I'll look at why that is the case when we open up the manifest files. But I basically have three uh, different files here that all have dash PV at the end. And all of these are going to be defining a persistent volume. Once I have that persistent volume created, then I attach a persistent volume claim, which is essentially a reservation of a portion of a persistent volume, which is going to be some uh, P connection to some kind of NFS, sh NFS share that's going to have a given capacity. And this is basically going to say, Hey, I need 10 gigs of that, or I need hundred gigs of that, whatever it might be. Once I have that created, then I can create an app that runs on top of the persistent volume claim. And then that gets mounted into the given application or the given container. Now, the first one to look at is blob storage, and I'm going to open this guy up. And this is my blob storage uh, persistent volume uh, definition here. Now, uh, I've given it a name called NFS. Uh, all of them are going to be called NFS for all my demos. Uh, but the thing I need to look at here is the access mode. Now, the default driver on a given Kubernetes cluster is typically a local driver, and it's going to be read write once. And because I'm using read write many, that is actually going to match between my persistent volume claim, which is also gonna have the same access mode attached to it. And also I have NFS parameters. So because I have rewrite many and I have NFS parameters in here, then the persistent volume drivers 
on Kubernetes that are built into the cluster are going to automatically use NFS. I don't have to use a storage class driver uh, for this. Uh, if I was using something like Gluster FS, I might actually have to use a, a storage class driver for that. But this is not that, so that I don't have to worry about it. But for Blob Storage, just a couple of things to point out here. This is the host name for my Blob Storage account. If it was a private endpoint and such as a uh, private link connection. I could use an IP address. That's why I have to have the storage account name here inside of the path, as well as in the host name right here. This is so if you're using a publicly accessible one or one that's bound to private endpoint, bound to a particular network, but not on a private endpoint, you would still need that to that storage account name inside of the host. But if I don't have that, I just have an IP there. It's going to be using the storage name that is embedded in the path in order to know what the storage can account is and this is the name of the container so i can't use folders in the container it has to be at the top level so you can't do anything after this such as a folder inside of that particular path there and a couple of other options you have here make sure you have no lock turned on uh vers or version is equal to three that's because it's version three of the nfs protocol you have a sec equal to sys and then protocol is tcp because udp isn't supported by this as of yet. So let's go ahead and, and create this inside of my command prompt and I will spin this persistent volume up. But first let's look at the persistent volume claim and the app that's gonna be using this. This will look the same for all of these. So I'm not gonna go into the details on it each, each time. But notice I have my access mode set to read write many as well. And I have a 10 gigabyte claim against a one terabyte uh, storage uh, unit. And this is going to reserve 10 gigabytes for this particular application. And this is my persistent volume claim of that kind. And notice I have the storage class set to empty. That's because there isn't necessarily a storage class associated with this. If you don't have that in there, what ends up happening is it will try to use the default driver, which then it's going to give you an error. Read write once is only supported by this. So because there is no storage class associated with NFS mounts inside of Kubernetes, you just leave that blank and all is good. So it's one of those idiosyncrasies you kind of have to watch out in your persistent volume claim. But once you have that, you can then open up your app definition. And this is where the things get plugged into your app. So there is the persistent volume claim. It's doing it by name right here, NFS claim. Uh, claim name is NFS that matched what was in my PVC uh, definition. And then this is where it gets mounted up inside of my container. So I'm putting it at slash my stuff and the volume name matches the volumes down here. So very straightforward there, nothing uh, fancy there. I'm not gonna review the app and the PVC between each of the demos. I'm basically just gonna look at the differences between the persistent volumes that I'm gonna be mounting, but the PVC will work for all of them. So let's go in and spin this up inside of our command prompt. Okay, I'm here inside of my command prompt. Now I just need to run a couple of kube commands to create some stuff here. So let's uh, show you that I don't have any um, persistent volumes here. So you can do get PV here. So I'm gonna create one using apply dash F and I'm gonna use that blob storage PV. Now, if I wanna get some information about that, I can go get PV that shows me some of the basic information. Now I can also do get PV uh, and describe PV, uh, describe PV in a fast right here. And that's gonna show me the basically the same thing that was in my manifest file. So to attach my PVC to this though, I need to apply pvc.yaml uh, PVC to this and that's going to create the persistent volume claim. Now I can describe PVC NFS, and that's going to show me the things that are associated with it. So you can see here that it's in a bound state, uh, and it will show you the kinds of things. The volume is named right there, no labels, annotations, and all that kind of things. It's in a bound state, but let's make sure that it did attach to my uh, PV, which is my PV right here. And my claim right here is going to be default slash NFS. So that I see my claim has been attached to this. So that tells me that my PVC did attach to my persistent volume here. So if I'm in that shape, then that means my volume is bound. Everything is connected. So I should be able to spin up my app. So kube apply dash F and I want to do app.yaml. And what this is going to do is create a service and a pod. I don't have to create the service for this particular demo. It's just, uh, it's in the, the manifest file that I had already. Um, and then I can do get pods already. I can do kubectl get pods 
And uh, there is my app, it's already running. So I should be able to get an exec into this guy. I can do kubectl exec dash it, and this will give me a, a shell inside of my uh, container here uh, using bash. So I uh, should be able to do an ls and there's cd my stuff right there. And this is the folder that was mounted. If I do ls on it, there's nothing in it. If I do, you know, echo, you know, I don't know, let's say hello world and, um, and then put it out to some file low dot text, um, and do ls on that. There's that file. And if I cat it, you know, you can see hello dot uh, txt and this is in blob storage now so that file has been written to blob storage however it is based on the underlying technology for that which is a data lake has been exposed to the nfs protocol so i couldn't go into storage explorer and see that because it's not currently supported as of yet hopefully in the future it will be but as of right now because this is in preview and that's not that i'm unable to actually verify there i could use another vm but i did that in another uh, video that is talking about how to set this up and i validated that everything did work so i'm not going to go through that process again but i am able to see that the this the mount is there everything looked good on the kubernetes side so i know that it's working so let's do that let's re rinse and repeat this for our other storage options okay let's create our volume first so i'm going to use kubectl to do that apply and uh, i'm going to use dash f not a, and uh, point it to that azure files.pv there and there is my i can use a describe on this guy here um, let's just do describe and describe, um, that's describe, describe PV and NFS. And that's going to spit out the various information related to that particular PV that we've created. And then I can, of course, you do apply for our PVC, apply, uh, dash F and, uh, PVC.yaml. And let's make sure that this looks good. Describe PVC NFS. And again, that's, that's bound in a bound state. And let's check out our uh, PV NFS and make sure that everything looks good there. So otherwise this looks identical to what we just saw. So if I want to create my app again, um, simply run that, uh, and that will create a pod. Uh, you can do kubectl get pods and see if this is running. It, it spun right up and we can then do repeat the exec command just to see that everything is working good on Azure files here and slash bash and, and uh, CD slash my stuff and nothing here. Again, echo something, hello. And uh, to some vile dot txt. And I can do an ls dash l or l. And you can see the properties there. I can do a cat on that and see that it's, you know, my files. So that's being written to Azure files now. So let's go and look at the last one, which is going to be our more enterprise class solution, which is going to be Azure NetApp files again here. Okay. Back in my folder here, let's open up our file for our persistent volume definition for, uh, NetApp files. Now, now NetApp files is a little bit different because NetApp files is doing a little bit more uh, more bare metal type mounting than what we were seeing through more of an interpolation, what we see with blob storage, which is more of an adaptation of the NFS protocol and the same with Azure files. This one is a little bit closer to the metal. And because of that, we see uh, some different options here. I chose version three for the protocol, but otherwise what I have here is the server is this case is going to be the IP address that I bound to my uh, NetApp files instance. So this is going to get a its own subnet or own subnet on my vnet and and on that vnet i'm going to have my netapp files attached to that subnet and then it's going to get a uh, private ip address for my netapp files and then once i have that private ip address I, I can then use the path and this is going to point to the volume that i created now i'm not going to go through how to create these i'll link the video on on how i create a, an azure netapp files account and then how to create a, a pool and then a volume in that down in the video description below. So you can go through that process, but, and then I'll also show you how to mount it up and all that in windows. And, and then it gives you instructions on how to do it inside of Linux. But in any case, in Kubernetes, I'm basically just taking the mount options here. Uh, and then I'm going to apply those using dashes. Uh, and this is what gets passed into the NFS driver and the covers. And these are the few that were supplied to me from the Azure portal. So I'm using RW hard lock, uh, using hard, um, locks against the file. Uh, th this is the 
block size and that kind of thing. And then I'm using version. Uh, this is telling it, telling the NFS client that I'm using version three of the protocol and I'm using TCP for the, the actual IP version of the protocol. So NFS V3 on TCP rather than UDP. And these are the options set for this particular PV. Other than that, uh, this is going to look exactly like the other ones that we've looked at so far. Okay, let's just repeat some of those commands that we just did. And for creating this, I've already cleaned up the other one, the other demo. So I'm going to do apply dash F, and then I'm going to say this time use my NetApp files pv.yam. And so I can do a describe on this if I want to. Cuddle describe um, and do pvnfs, and that's going to get my information about my persistent volume uh, for my particular. A volume that I'm going to be specifying here. So let's go ahead and create a PVC against this guy. I can do apply uh, PVC against this one. And this one is going to create my persistent volume claim. If I describe my PV again, I should see uh, the claim now. Uh, there, there's my claim, my bound state uh, NFS. So I did know that I bound that particular persistent volume claim to now my NFS share off of NetApp files. So with that, um, I should be able to run my apply for my app again and get basically the same uh, song and dance as we saw already. So I uh, should be able to get pods now um, and get a list of my pod. And there it is. Uh, let's go, it's still creating the container. Um, and let's, let, let the, let's let that finish and we'll come back Okay, I read that a few times. That looks like I'm in a good shape now. Here, uh, let's let's uh, let's go ahead and grab the name right here. Uh, I had to, I did for some reason it didn't create, so I had to just stop it and restart it uh, for the apply. Uh, sometimes that happens in Kubernetes. It's uh, probably because I had some old junk that was still deleting and it wouldn't let me create it. But in any case, I was able to get it created this time by reapplying the uh, app.yaml. And so let's uh, run this guy and uh, see what happens. Kub uh, Kubernetes exec dash it uh, name of the pod slash bin slash bash and um, let's see c slash my stuff and um, nah, I don't have anything in there let's do coop cuddle or not nah, sorry not coop cuddle echo dash I don't know, whatever hello blaze and let's put that out to a file blaze.txt and ls there's my text file and so on so this is um, again, running NetApp files uh, for this year. So uh, what we've seen is we've seen three different ways to use NFS on Azure. Uh, one was NFS with blob storage, one was NFS with Azure files, and one was with NetApp files. So again, lots of activity in the space, uh, and each one of those tiers would be appropriate for different kinds of workloads. But I hope uh, this will give you some insights on what you need to do to get this spun up. I will put the, coast, uh, the code uh, demos that I have here out in a GitHub repo, and you can download those, and that will be linked in the video description down below. So thanks for watching this edition of Tech on Fire with Blades. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.